news is always bad news. Good news is simply not news. And so that is our bias and that is why we often overlook the many good things that are happening in the world around us today. And now it's time for a fascinating discussion with Reason Science correspondent Ron Bailey. So you have a great article in Reason Magazine's 45th anniversary double edition, and it's called Seven Surprising Truths About the World, where, in my opinion, data is at odds with intuition. For example, we think that cancer rates are going up, but that's not true. You're absolutely right. Uh, cancer rates are, in fact, going down. Cancer incidence rate, that is, fewer people are getting cancer all the time. And they've been going down since 1994, thereabouts, at about a rate, it sounds small, but a rate about 0.6% uh, uh, per year. But that adds up to, uh, if you look at it, that uh, 100,000 fewer people who otherwise would have had cancer are not, in fact, getting cancer. And there are a lot of good reasons for that, one of which is, and the chief one of which is, that people are taking preventative measures. They've stopped smoking, more of them. Also, they're getting colonoscopies, and I guess the final thing is, is that women are no longer taking hormone replacement therapy, which actually boosted uh, breast cancer rates. Uh, so basically, what we're finding out is pe the people's intuition that there's a cancer epidemic is false. There it, is not. It feels like there is a lot more cancer, but in reality, people are getting diagnosed sooner, they're getting treated better, and their behavior is changing. That's correct. Another surprising thing that you found in your seven surprising truths about the world is people are actually getting smarter. Yes, that is true. It's called the Flynn Effect. It was discovered by a New Zealand political scientist when he went back and checked current IQ tests against old IQ tests. And basically what he's discovered in a nutshell is that someone who would score 100 on today's IQ test would score 115 on an IQ test from the 1940s, in indicating that basically people have gotten 15 IQ points smarter over that period of time. And also, I mean, we know nutrition is better, people are getting better schooling, but there's one surprising thing that's making people smarter globally. What is that? Basically, it's a wonderful study, and what, they, what you could do is correlate the following, is infectious disease rates among children and IQ tests. And what happens is you find the places where uh, in, uh, childhood infections are going down, you find that people get smarter. So basically, what, they, what they're d discovering is that when kids used to get all kinds of diseases, that it was impacting their brain development over time, that brains are very metabolically expensive to, to make, and so diverting resources to throwing off diseases caused them to, uh, to lose IQ points. Because we have fewer diseases, and I do suggest that you get your kids vaccinated, uh, they are, we are now smarter than we would otherwise have been. Another thing that seems to be true is actually false, and that is that people who live longer have fewer children you think it would be the reverse, like, I'm going to live a long time, I'll have a giant brood. Yes, that is true. What we find is that the places where people live longest have fewer kids. And part of what's going on with that is, is that, and particularly women, is, is that what we find is that if women can expect only to live to their 50s or so, they have about six kids over the course of their lifetime. Whereas in places where they can live to over 70, they have below two kids. And this seems to be a difference in strategy, if you will, and basically you have fewer kids if you are going to be around long enough to make sure that they become mature and that you're able to educate them and you can invest in their, their future well-being. And you have more kids if you think, well, maybe I'm not going to be around long enough to, to take care of them all and we'll, I'll try to just have as many as I can so that some of them will survive. Interesting. So Malthus be damned, population is going to top out, you say, around eight or nine billion. It's generally agreed among demographers, if current trends continue, that world population will probably top out at around eight to nine billion sometime in the middle of this century and start falling and could be back below what it is today by 2100. So in these surprising truths, we find that there are a lot of things in the world that are getting better. Why are we so slow to recognize that the world is becoming a better place? I generally think it's a problem of evolutionary psychology, that what basically is we were, our ancestors, uh, when they were wandering around in the, in the jungles in the old days, basically if they heard something rustling in the bushes, they could go, well, that's the wind, and they you know, walk on. Or if they, the, if they heard it, you know, said, well, maybe there's a tiger behind that bush. The person who said, maybe there's a tiger behind that bush lived longer. What we have here is a, a bias in favor of caution. We are the product of evolutionary uh, psychology where we think much more easily about how things can go wrong and it's much harder for us to think about how things can go right. And therefore we focus on bad news. In fact, if you think about it, 
news is always bad news. Good news is simply not news. And so that is our bias and that is why we often overlook the many good things that are happening in the world around us today. All right, so we've evolved to be a bunch of Debbie Downers, great. I'm afraid that's true. Interesting. Well, you can read about all of the seven surprising truths in the brand new 45th anniversary double edition of Reason Magazine. Ron Bailey, thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. For Reason TV, I'm Kennedy. Mm -hmm.